So with that, let's move into buy or sell. Uh, I love buy or sell. It's my uh, ability of trying to really truly bridge this technology and marketing conversation with uh, you know the the buy sell of the investment management side of the business. So what I'm going to do is I have four uh, four points here, Dave, and I'm going to just go through them and. If you agree with them, say buy. If you disagree with the statement, say sell. And you know, take a quick second to, to talk about why you're leaning one way or the other. Uh, and we'll see whether you're a, a, a bull or a bear with regards to the set of questions or comments that I put out there. Sound good? It does. All right. First one, buy or sell. Robo solutions should be utilized within a financial advisory practice to provide the ultimate value to the end client. Total buy. If you can get any efficiency from technology, and if you can engage a second generation of a client by seeming to be more advanced in your approach, do it. Why hesitate? And I agree with that 100%. I think that some of the people's feedback is that it's uh, it, it, because it's going to take time, right? It's a time that's going to be, I might have to deal with that the ROI, going back to ROI, which we've talked about a few times here, isn't going to be there. But I, I, um, I think that it, it will longer term and it's creating an efficiency for you that you're going to learn something that you're going to be able to implement on both your high net worth and your your younger clients as well. Um, buy or sell, driving value for clients has become more difficult for advisors as new technologies have been introduced into our industry. So, um, value is in the eye of the beholder. So, has it become more difficult as new technologies have come in? No. I think the value is in the relationship. And as a professional, it is your job to establish a relationship and use tools to back up that relationship and make it more effective. So then I'll, I'll turn this question around for you for real quick. I just want to go down this hole for a second. Is Do you think that advisors have leveraged technology to or focus too much on technology and less on the, the relationship? because they think that the technology is going to drive the value? Do you think that, that it's kind of like actually been, uh, uh, it's just changed the focus, which has led to a detriment for the advisor? It may have done. And let me give you a scenario where I'm kind of pulling this from. Is if you're going into a client meeting and five minutes before you look into your CRM and you're reminding yourself of the names of their children so you can go into the meeting. Um, or their wife that is coming in and she may not have come in you know, too many times before. Um, being very stereotypical here. If your CRM breaks and you go into that meeting and you don't know the names of these people, do you have a very strong relationship with that person? Or are you relying too much on technology? Mm. Mm. That's a fair point. It's a very valid point. If, uh, if you, yeah. yeah, what happens when the internet goes out and you can't get to your CRM anymore and you got your clients still sitting outside because the car still works? Um, that is a good point. I don't have an answer to that, but I think that, that, is, I think that people are relying on technology, whether it's you know, they just rely on their financial planning you know, solutions to do everything, but they don't necessarily know the ins and outs of why those solutions are coming about um, and, and, it, and it hampers sometimes the, the relationship there. All right, third one buy or sell innovation for the financial advisory industry will have to come from outside the industry as opposed to within the people or companies inside our industry buy i think as an industry we are such inside of a bubble like we know the way we're supposed to do business um but you know the example we mentioned before if you can bring a vr headset into a meeting and just completely change the behavior of a client that did not come from inside our industry. No advisor created that. That's going to come from a completely different realm of life. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think that there's a, the outside the industry is going to spur the innovation, I think. Um, and it's going to then infiltrate into our industry. All right, last one. Speaking of outside the industry, over the next seven years, the subscription model that Netflix has made so common will not only infiltrate the industry, but overtake the AUM style fees advisors currently charge, meaning more than 50% of the firms will utilize some form of a subscription style pricing. So I think you're being generous on seven years. Wow. I give it 20. I give it 20. All right. Um, and I definitely do not think it's going to come close to overtaking AUM fees. That is the way our industry has been built. That's the way that people are familiar with. Until we get at least two generations removed from that, 
that are used to subscription price models as the only way, then I think it, it needs more time. Now I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit and, um, and you can avoid it if you want. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but is, I mean, are you a fan of the AUM style? Are you a fan? Do you, do you believe that that, uh, is what, um, it, it drives the kind of the, 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 the value is aligned on the AUM side of what the, the value that the advisor should be providing overall to the client. I think every pricing model works for different situations. So I think the subscription model works. You know, I used it for a, a big portion of my practice and I actually no longer use it because I transitioned my practice into going a different direction with different value propositions. But I think AUM is still the main fee structure that people are comfortable with. And if you're dealing with older clients who have a bulk of assets, that's what you're gonna bill against in terms of providing your value. And that's the way it's been. I don't. Change is hard, like anywhere. So to get away from that model that really drives our industry is just going to take more time, more education, more effort. Um, and if it's working now, people aren't going to change something that's working. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with you there. I think that that is, it's a difficult challenge, um, and it, it's going to take a lot of education, not only within the industry, um, but to the people you're selling to, and it's going to lengthen a sales cycle, no question about it, because it's going to be different. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so it, it seems like you were a little bit split on the bull or bear. That's okay. That's all right. We had a few bulls, a few bears, and uh, and and that's what we get through with uh, with buy or sell. 